This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. All right, so welcome to the After Action Review Podcast. I'm your host, Rod Rodriguez, and it is a week out till Christmas, so Merry Christmas to everyone. Now, here's the thing, and here's a faux pas that I'm making right now. In the world of, of audio and video production, you never, you never tell people what day it is because you might be listening to this in January, and if you hear me say, well, Merry Christmas, ah, oh, it just, it kind of... It feels old. So uh, Merry Christmas. I don't care. I'm going to say it. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Um, you know, this is a special time of year. And this is one of the few times um, that in recent memory, I'm actually home for the holidays. I'm home with my kids. I'm home with my wife. And we are doing a traditional Christmas because the last couple, I've been in Afghanistan. I've been in Kuwait. I've been doing other things, just trying to put food on the table, trying to make ends meet. And, you know, you really do appreciate what you have when you have it. And if you don't, and if you're one of these guys, one of these, these guys that sit in your truck or you're, you're going to your nine to five and you're like, God, I wish I was back in Afghanistan. I wish I was back in Iraq. And I get it. I've had that feeling too. There's been days where I was like, it was simpler then. Just remember that when you were sitting on your bunk, and the holidays rolled around. As much as you love the troops around you, love as much as you love the men and women that you serve with, you were thinking about mom, you were thinking about dad, you were thinking about your family, your dogs, your cousins, your sister, your aunt, whoever it is that's special to you, you were thinking about them that day. So if you're home, make a call. It takes you about two minutes. Send a text message. Just wish that person today that you're home and you're safe um, and you're not in some other country, a quote unquote shithole, if you will, just be grateful that you're not out there and send someone that you love a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. On the same note, if you know somebody that is in a foreign country, I don't care where it is, shoot them an email, shoot them a, 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 a Facebook message, send them something, let them Remember, let, you know, remind them that you care, that there's somebody else out here that is thinking about them. And if you're listening to this and it's not Christmas, it's January, March, June, pick your month. The message still applies. If you're hearing this, when's the last time you reached out to your battle buddy? When's the last time you reached out and said, hey, mom, thinking about you? So it's not just Christmas. It's all about it's about connection. Keep those connections going. And speaking of connections, I've got a connection here. I've got a salt forward. In fact, they've got me. I am in uh, the WeWork building here in Washington, D.C. So if you hear sirens, it's probably someone being terribly murdered outside. It is D.C. <laughs> but these are veterans. These troopers do not care. They're ready to fight the forces of evil that live and reside. Man, I just described them like Batman. Maybe they are the Batman. You guys could be the Batman of this uh, of this terrible city. No, it's a beautiful city. Uh, but yes, I am here in the WeWork station, and I'm going to have these gentlemen introduce themselves. They're going to talk a little bit about their business. I'm really excited. And when I talked about connection, we have something in common, and that would be Bunker Labs. We know we've, we, you, you do some business with Bunker Labs. I've had a great uh, opportunity to work with a lot of the, the different businesses from Bunker Labs. But let's talk about you guys. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. 
Hey, I'm Shah Chowdhury, a co-founder of Assault Forward. And I'm Joe Himpleman, one of the other co-founders. Great. Now, Assault Forward, what is it? So Assault Forward is a military pride and patriotic accessories company. So we take the reverse American flag, the same way we wore it on our uniforms in combat on our right shoulder in the subdued forward facing, you know, the stars charging into battle. You know, that's literally where the name Assault Forward comes from. If you picture the guy with the guide on charging on the field of battle, running with the flag flowing behind him, same way it's depicted on the tail of an aircraft flying forward. Uh, we take that and we take it and turn it into professional accessories such as a lapel pin, a tie bar, a cuff link. So when people come up to you and ask why is it backwards or what does it mean when it's facing that way, we want the opportunity to start a meaningful conversation so veterans can share the story of their service. We're deeply concerned that veterans have double the unemployment rate of the general population, especially post 9-11 veterans, our, our era of veterans. And so we think that starting a meaningful conversation around your service and having pride of your service and those unique skills, talents, and attributes that you picked up in the service will translate into the civilian workforce in a very effective and meaningful way. So if companies, especially in interviews, have the opportunity to learn that you were in the military, by asking a question just around a simple lapel pin that you're wearing, we think that's a great opportunity for veterans to start a conversation. The way I say it too is there are a lot of veteran brands out there, Grunt Style, Nine Line, <clears throat> all those companies, great companies. We love all veteran owned companies. Um, we wanted to do something a little different. So we all have professional jobs. Those are our thing. We wanted a brand to represent us as professional veterans. So we wanted to do something different. So that's where we started with lapel pins cufflinks, tie bars. Um, we're actually just got off the phone with another manufacturer to look at polo shirts as well. So that's kind of where like the professional veteran brand name. We've heard people say, hey, some civilians, Salt Ford is kind of an aggressive name. But like, yeah, we're still combat veterans, but we are, you know, we're, 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 we're in professional work outfit every day. And um, so that's kind of who we are. An aggressive name as opposed to uh, uh, not assaulting or uh, sitting sitting on the couch. Exactly. Yeah, what? That's not cool. Exactly. Well, we want veterans to you know, translate their military experience from the battlefield to the boardroom. Mm -hmm. So take take what you learned in combat. Those you know, decision making ability, the decisiveness, the you know ability to to make decisions on the fly and execute plans and orders, and and use that in your in your civilian day to day careers. Uh, veterans bring a lot to the workplace uh, here in D.C. You know, it's a very thriving entrepreneur community, tech community, government service. There's a lot of things that veterans can contribute to the civilian workforce. And if those skills are, if, if civilians are made aware of those skills that the veterans bring to the table, we think you'd get a lot more of them hired and really starting meaningful careers. So were, were you guys at all concerned coming into this industry with those big names you just mentioned, Grunt Style, huge. I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone is bigger than Grunt Style. You got Nine Line, you've got um, who else yeah. is out there? No, Boy, I mean, there's only so like two or three, no, but they're huge. Yeah, there, there's Ranger Up. And Ranger that's, Up, and yeah. that's where when we kind of came on. So we met at the University of Maryland. Uh, we were using our GI Bill, Joe, myself, and our other partner, Josh. And you know, we went and we used our GI Bill, got our MBAs in Maryland, and we graduated in July of last year. In October, the idea came out where we started talking about it. And we said, okay, how do we quote unquote, compete against Grunt Style. So we're like, hey, we, we're, we're not going to compete against them. They're a behemoth. So how do we do something different? And that's where we came up, hey, none of the veteran brands out there have a professional, that's their main thing. So we're like, hey, let's let's run with that. And, and forget, and there's not really, we don't look at them as competitors, right? We think there's plenty of space for veteran owned businesses. We love it, but we wanted to do something a little different to try to separate, our, separate ourselves from the pack. And I, and I think we did that and we're having success so far. I would just also add, you know, if you're listening to this podcast because you're a veteran entrepreneur, you're thinking about starting a business, um, you're transitioning veteran, looking at, you know, making the transition from active duty to the civilian world, um, I would encourage you to absolutely follow the founders of all of those companies on their Instagram, their Twitter, um, whether it's, you know, Dan Alaric from Grunt Style, um, Eli from Bottle Breacher, um, the guy from Redline Steel is out there. He puts his stuff out there. I mean, those companies are all doing amazing things, and you can totally learn a lot um, from the free content that they put out there on their social media profiles. Um, so, you know, watch and learn. Watch the Shark Tank episode with Bottle Breacher over and over again mm -hmm. um, and, and learn from them um, as we've done. You know, we, we follow them all. Um, 
you know, I think Article 15, Black Rifle Coffee, uh, you know, we watch all their YouTube videos and laugh just like every other veteran when they're, they, you know, blow up ridiculous things at the range or get a, get a helicopter to, um, or what they put, they put a Gatling gun on a Prius. Um, that was my personal favorite. Yeah. I drive a Prius. And I was getting a lot of shit for driving a Prius. Yeah. And you were like, dude, you know what I can do with this thing? That yeah. is for, I, I forwarded that over to a buddy of mine at, uh, at Jida who was giving me a, you know, yeah. that rash of shit for driving the, the, the Prius. And he's like, it's yes. still a Prius. Yeah, still a Prius. Yeah. That's what he wrote. He was like, it's still a Prius. So oh all God. these guys are putting out great, <laughs> great content and you can totally, um, you know, soak it in and, and learn from them. Um, as you make your own space, um, whether it's, you know, a lot of veterans start businesses that have nothing to do with the military. Um, we happened to find this niche where we thought, you know, they had the reverse American flag is a really meaningful depiction of the flag to us and the way we wore it in combat. So we wanted to, to use that as our you know basis for some designs and, and go from there. But there's plenty of other veterans that take their skills that they learn in the military and start businesses that have, that have nothing to do with the government or military. Um, and, you know, they're just doing their thing out there. But learning from your fellow veteran entrepreneurs, um, especially in a incubator, accelerator, startup space like Bunker Labs, whether it's online or in person in one of their communities. Like you said, we're here in the Veterans in Residence suite at WeWork in Washington, D.C. Um, I think they're now in like a dozen cities across the country. So if you're looking for an amazing place to work out of for um, to get your business going or, or take it to the next level, um, exploring these programs and opportunities that are available um, to the veteran and entrepreneur community are, are incredible opportunities. So one of the things, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys, um, I've always been apprehensive about veteran apparel and veteran style, I guess. Well, and it's all in the apparel market, I guess. My apprehension has been this. There's so many, so many, but there's only two or three powerhouses. I'm all about competition. I'm all about, you know, why not me? If you think you can do it, do it. But I get like... I say a good 75% of the people that email me and say, Hey, I would love to be on the after action review. They're veteran clothing apparel people. I'm at the point now where I have to ask what makes you different than everyone else. So I got to ask you guys, what makes assault forward different from everyone else in this market? Well, that's where we come back to how we put ourselves in the marketplace. And, and we see it, we see a lot of the different veteran brands. It's all about the t-shirts, right? The grungy t-shirts with, the humor, which, which we're cool with, right? Like right. we get it, but civilians are get it, but it's something that you can't wear in a professional work environment. Like, hey, F you, I love my AR-15, yes. it's fine, it's just fine, right? But you can't wear that. And those are kind of above and beyond most of the stuff that you see out there. So that's where we're like, hey, we don't want to do that because that's not us, um, you know, and again, nothing wrong with that, that's just not us, right? And so we're like, how do we do something different? So we're like, hey, we're focusing on more of a professional type segment um, you know, not saying it'll suit and tie everybody because we have people who, you know, who buy other things, but for veterans like us who wear a jacket, who wear a button down or a collar or a polo shirt and, and, and in the professional workspace. And then also one thing that we huge for us is we're, everything's American made hundred percent. So again, not trying to knock any other companies, a lot of these companies, they're not American made, right? And now they're starting to go with certain segments and certain products, but we said off the bat, if we're going to be a veteran owned professional accessories and apparel company. It has to be American made hundred percent, no compromise. So that's kind of been our thing um, now. And that's, and that's who we are. Like literally everything, even when we did some giveaways and we did uh, promotional merchandise for a couple of things, we said, Hey, American made. So it has to be. So I think that's kind of the big thing, but also I guess the professional segment, if you go, you'll see, and again, and, and whether if, you know, if any other success is all dependent on the person. So if somebody say, hey, I'm trying to look, I started my own veteran t-shirt company and I've made $50,000 this year as a business. Hey, for them, that's that might be fine, right? And that's good, and that's good money. So that's kind of how we're different. We're trying to separate ourselves in that capacity. Yeah, I think, Yuri, and you know, to dovetail on what Shaw was saying, I think the, um, the professional space, you know, and how we, how we go to market and that differentiation, um, the subtlety of what we do. So we have a lot of customers that say, you know, this is this is what I was looking for without knowing it was really what I was looking for. I wanted to show some some sort of token of my military service in my day-to-day -day business attire. 
Um, but I didn't. I never came across something that was just right for me. The waving red, white, and blue American flag lapel pin that most politicians wear. People said like that. That's not me. I don't want to wear that. That bright, flashy. But hey, yours is antique silver, black enamel fill. It's subtle. You know, it doesn't pop, but still, people notice it and say, "Hey, what's up with that?" Or you know, what does that mean? So it's that. It's that subtle depiction of your military service that can start a conversation that people take pride in. And say, "Yeah, I want. To, I want to talk about my military service. I just didn't know how to start the conversation." And I think that's the the market niche that we're we're filling uh, for the veteran community. Um, is really that you do experience a certain, you know, like you, you mentioned in your opening comments, and you've had those days where you're like, man, I just wish I was back in Iraq. Yeah. It was simplor. I had a clear set, you know, eat, sleep, go to the gym, work out, go on patrol, come that back, it. do it again. Like it's a nice, simple routine. Um, you know, and that I still go back and say, man, you know, before I turned 30, I'd probably done the most meaningful thing other than becoming a father. I was going to do for the rest of my life, you know, just command 128 soldiers for a year of combat in Iraq. Um, and successfully bring them all home safely. I mean, that was pretty awesome. So when you take off that uniform for the last time, like I did a couple years ago and like Shaw did, um, you know, you do certainly feel that certain loss of identity. Um, Because on our uniforms, you know, we wear badges, ribbons, medals, patches that show like, oh, I've got a combat patch. Oh, I got my my CIB or my cab. I've got, uh, you know, unit insignias, all this stuff, tabs and all that stuff. And so like when you take that all off and you're just in a suit and tie or or just, you know, jeans and a t-shirt, how do you, how do you share the story of your service without that, without that billboard, (laughs) without walking around with a billboard on that says, you know, I'm a veteran. Thank me for my service. So the subtlety of what we do at Assault Forward, um, is you know absolutely the key differentiation of how we go to market and why why I think our message resonates with our customers. That's an interesting point. I, I know when I was in the service, you know, you wear the uniform that everyone else is wearing, and when you're in the unit, you look like every other person. But when you leave those gates, that's when it really hits you how different you are. Nobody's wearing what you're wearing. You are completely different. You get out, you put on that suit and tie. For a minute, you feel special, right? You're like, oh, snap. Like, I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm balling out right now. Like, look at me. But then you walk into the, to an office or you come down to D.C., everybody looks like that. You cannot throw a rock without hitting at least 10 dudes in a suit at any given point in D.C. Yeah. Right. And, and to your point, so when I first moved to D- I'm from New York City originally. So I moved to New York, uh, this area in about 2007, big government area. A lot of my veteran friends were in the area. And so everyone... In the government space, you see a lot of lapel pins, right? Army flag, Marine Corps flag. And so I was like, hey, I'm wearing a suit. Like, So I, my first lapel pin that I bought was combination U.S. Army flag with the American flag. That was my lapel pin for a while. All the time, people come up and I'd see it. And, you know, people wear a lapel pin. Like, oh, what, what are they wearing there? What are they wearing there? So that's how I kind of was like, hey, yeah, I am wearing a suit and tie like everyone else. But, you know, I'm proud of my service. So here's here's the Army flag. And. Um, and Joe, in, in, in our MBA program, that's how, you know, we, we became friends in the program, but that's how this kind of came about. He brought quote unquote, a lapel pin <laughs> and that kind of triggered uh, this, so, um, which I think is pretty cool. And it's, it's that connection that all veterans share with each other. You know, we're part of that 1%. 1% of Americans that have volunteered, all volunteer force, that have stood up, raised their right hand, and, you know, wrote that blank check to the United States government up to your life. Um, you know, and you know, for me, three combat deployments, three, 36 months downrange um, between both Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, so, you know, we share that special bond when you say, hey, I was in Mosul, or yeah, I was based out of Bagram, or I was in Ghazni, or, you know, I was out in JBAD or ABAD, <laughs> um, just some of the places that I personally have visited, um, you know, and, and spent those holidays. Um, you know, your opening comments again hit me there because I was like, yep, I've, I've definitely uh, celebrated, um, you know, some Thanksgivings, Christmases, and other holidays either on the side of a mountain, uh, eating out of an MRE bag, or, uh, or if I was lucky to be back on a big base going to the DFAC and getting uh, some hot chow, um, but absolutely does not compare to uh, mom's home cooking. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie. I had a Thanksgiving on Camp Vance on, uh, in Bagram, and that was probably the best Thanksgiving meal I've ever had. I'm sorry, mom, but that was pretty 
amazing turkey. I'm just saying I'll, it I'll was tell, so good. I'll tell one quick sidebar story on that. Um, Thanksgiving 2003, I'll say, I was in uh, Nongalam, Afghanistan, up the Pesh River Valley, and we uh, had just occupied the territory, um, and so they were going to, the aviation unit was going to fly out Thanksgiving dinner for us. And so we had uh, some observation posts way up on the mountain above kind of our base camp and spread out. So these guys had those green mermite containers, mm-hmm. you know, and so they, I don't think the aviation guys really knew what they had in what. So they, they went up and they, you know, lowered them down uh, to the top of the mountain and those guys got theirs and then the rest came down to the, the bottom of the mountain where we were at the base camp and spread it out and we started opening them up and we're like, man, like, this is great. You know, we got stuffing, mashed potatoes, corn, but where's the turkey? And the guys on the top of the hill on the radio radioed down like, hey, we got an awful lot of turkey up here, but no sides. And so <laughs> aviation guys are long gone at that point. But so actually everybody thought it was really cool because the guys at the top of the mountain had just nothing but turkey and all the turkey they could eat for days. <laughs> they were happy. And the guys at the bottom were like, well, this is great, man. We got all these extra sides. Like, this is great. So we loaded up. So uh, a great Thanksgiving there of a piecemeal between the different units, uh, you know, you take what you can, take what you can get downrange. Absolutely, yes. and we were all happy because it wasn't an MRE. Oh yeah, God, I think I, we went three months before we actually got a, a exactly. real meal yeah. back in 03. Yeah. But, exactly. but that's right. I was I was in Baghdad from May 03 to July 04. So mm-hmm. the first three four months were straight MREs, and yep. um, we had the T rats for a while. But we would show up, and they'd be like, "Yeah, we have no food today, so MREs it is." So by the time we left. There was Philly cheesesteaks, and it was like, this is great. And the guys coming in, I remember first cab took over for us, and we were on the line at um, Victory for the food, and these guys were complaining about the offering. I'm like, you guys are complaining about cheesesteaks, man? We had, we had MREs for the first four faces. months. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So. Bro, I stole, yeah. <laughs> so I stole a rack of tamale tea rats, uh-huh. and nobody else wanted them. Uh-huh. So they were going to throw them. I was like, I didn't want to seem like a weirdo, like, I'm gonna go pick some trash food. Yeah. So I just went in there and I was like, took a took a rack, took it back to the bunk, and I'm sitting there. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? That I'm I rip this thing open. I'm eating tamale tea rats with a spoon. Yeah. Like I need help. Yeah. Like, I need a real <laughs> meal. Yeah. But yeah. so you met at uh, University of Maryland, yeah. MBA programs, yeah. and Assault Forward is born. You two of you are, you know, the the melding of the minds. What? were some of your initial challenges in launching this new business? Yeah, I I guess I'll take first step at that one. Um, You know, I think almost more than any challenge that we faced was just the recognition, and we give this advice, we get reached out now as as a slightly established company um, from folks all the time, What's, what's our advice to them or whatever, and our advice is always the same, do it, go now. If you have an idea and you wanna launch, like do it right now. Don't wait. You don't have to patent protect it. You don't have to trademark it. You don't have to build up 10,000 followers on Facebook before you launch. You don't have to have, you know, a wide, you know, massive investment in inventory or services. You just have to start um, and get up, go and do it now. And I think for us, the key thing that really got us moving was um, like if, you know, having three co-founders was, was absolutely critical. Um, for our success, because between the three of us, we can cover just about anything, uh, whether it's you know stocking inventory, putting product together, communicating with customers, doing live events at you know pop up shop opportunities, um, doing networking events, um, you know speaking and taking opportunities anytime we can to promote the business. Um, so having a co-founder, I think I, I give solo entrepreneurs a ton of credit because it's you know if you don't feel like doing it today, like it ain't getting done. Mm-hmm. Um, so having co-founders for us, I think was absolutely critical because we drive each other. It's like, hey, what time are you coming to work tomorrow? 7 a.m. All right, I'll see you at 7 a.m. You know, if that means a 5 a.m. wake up, it means a 5 a.m. wake up, but we're gonna hold each other accountable for that. Um, and so like those those things are really, was important to us. But I think the challenge is, is just, you have to you know, recognize what do you, what do you absolutely need and what can you, what can you get by without until you get a little more established. So for us, we launched, you know, with a single, product the reverse american flag lapel pin it's you know it's die cast it's finely detailed high quality made in america so we felt good about it but we're like all right we got a pin here we go let's see if let's see if anybody wants it yeah um, you know, we're, we're how scary was that uh, i was you know i mean we had 
I mean, we're, <laughs> we're fairly confident individuals, but I mean, like you're putting yourself out there, you know, which, which is, you know, they're like, yeah. all right, universe, like, let's see if anybody wants this. And so, um, absolutely. We sold our first, you know, probably two dozen to our friends and family. Yeah. And then after that, you know, we, I think the first time you get an order from a stranger on your website, yeah, we you were know, like, Woo-hoo. we're like, Oh yes. hey, you know, who's yeah. this rod guy? Yeah. Yeah. Rod yeah. wants to buy yeah. a pin. I don't know. Do yeah. you know? Like, cause we ask each other like, Hey, is that yours? Is that yeah. yours? Yeah. Do you know that yeah. person? We're like, no man, who's rod? All right. So cool. I think also the challenge though. The plus is, right, you have three co-founders. So I have a finance background, but that's my day job. I do finance. Joe does marketing. Josh is an operations guy. So, yes, we covered in the strengths there. But then you also have the flip side. You have three people. You have three leaders, three type A type of people. So butt heads disagree on things, right? But generally speaking, like, and, and we've never, in a few, like, I've worked with Josh in the NBA. But there's a lot of team projects. So I knew Joe. We, we were cool, we were cordial. We weren't like the best of friends during the program. I was closer with Josh in the program. Um, but then we got out, I was like, all right, now we're working with someone. And once we were all on board, we were all, kind of Joe said, we were motivated to go. Um, I've had other things that I tried on my own that failed because I didn't really have a passion for it. But then that goes up, we have different ideas, right? Hey, so it's three of us. So some things get nixed, some things get screwed up. So, you know, there's been some back and forth, nothing to where it's like, going to blows or anything like that but there is you know things you have an idea and it's like hey no, negative we don't like that or so how do you solve that i mean there's three of you obviously somebody can be outvoted mm-hmm. but i've heard in numerous business uh publications and talks that you always have to have one guy who is the final decision maker this dude is going to say like yay or nay and everybody has to fall in uh, fall in line how do you guys negotiate those yay or nays so we've we've talked about this we said if it really came to a contentious like we would do like a a vote right there's three of us but example like when it comes to finance stuff they kind of really defer to me right i'll keep them abreast like you know getting the taxes done and all this stuff i'll say hey here's fyi these are the two things that we need to look on i'm leaning toward this and they're like okay roger when it comes to marketing joe kind of runs with it right now there there's a lot more back and forth because there's messaging and whatnot but then Joel's like, hey, you know, I agree. I see you guys don't agree with that, but this is how I've done it with the other company. Like, okay, so it hasn't gotten to the point, I think, because example, if there's something that I'm really adamant on, for example, on the finance side or something, like, hey, negative, like we have to do it this way. There's a reason why. Like, okay, got it. It's vice versa. Joel's like, no, shot. Like, hell no, we have to do it this way. This is the reason why. Like, okay, cool. And then we look at that the the magnitude of the decision like example we're talking about a certain product and i was like ah, i don't know somebody will buy that because like hey it'll cost us this much money i was like all right you know what that's not a big that's not a huge investment let's try it out and then we kind of we kind of work that way so it's been pretty you know going back you know i, I think pretty you know, we've been compromising to each other i think it hasn't come to blows because shah's a purple belt in jujitsu yes so yeah. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be foolish on josh or i's part to try to uh <laughs> attack him physically um four strike purple belt my uh, Ooh. So. We dropped the dropped strike. Strike. I, I, I don't even know what that means. That, but I that means I'm in, inching the brown belt. Yeah. Here next so, year. yeah. Um, but but uh, I think I passed Army Combatives level yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, um, no, I think you know, it is it is a uh, it is a, a friendship. It is a business relationship. It is shared decision making. Um, you know, just like your household decisions, you can make that decision on your own, but if you run it by household six, you know, it'll be better, um, in the end. (laughs) So, um, I absolutely think that, you know, we, we definitely have our, our strengths, um, that we bring to it and kind of, we delineate the responsibilities along those kind of functional areas. So, you know, if it's an operational decision, we look to Josh to say, Hey, how do you do this? You know, we've, it took us, it took us a while to learn the process, but our products are now listed on Amazon. We heard that from many people like, Hey, if you're in e-commerce, you're, you're selling anything. Um, you, you ought to be listed on Amazon to sell your stuff. Well, it's not as easy as just like, you know, logging on, like the way you buy off Amazon, yeah. it's a little bit harder to sell yeah, off Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> so like we, we submitted our product photos and they were like, you know, we thought it was our, our it had to be, we, the, the requirements said it had to be on a white background mm-hmm. and we thought it was a, you know, our products on a white background. They were like, it's not white enough. So we're like, okay. So we had like our photographer like retouch the photos to make sure it was a stark white background for the product shot. You know, like, okay. Then those got accepted. And then like, how do you list your shipping? And then the communication with the 
seller dashboard on Amazon and all that. But so there's a learning process. So anyway, we refer to Josh for that when it comes to building the brand, the brand awareness, the social media, um, the kind of look and feel of our website and how our logo is used. You know, obviously sales and marketing, that's kind of my background. So I'm going to take the lead on those areas. And then absolutely what, what Shaw said when it comes to the, you know, being a, uh, you know, Fortune 500 commercial investment banker guy, um, when it comes to finance, we're going to look to his, you know, experience um as far as to put it all in bitcoin boys yes put it all in bitcoin <laughs> we're going we're going we're going hard on bitcoin um which we uh, do not accept on our website although yeah. we do accept visa mastercard american express i accept bitcoin for donations <laughs> just putting that out there it's on the website don't worry about it anyways so, uh, yeah but uh so yeah i think i mean that's that's how you you know with co-founders that is definitely a challenge um but it also presents an opportunity to you know share in the decision making review decisions jointly make sure there's you, you limit your mistakes by running them past other people, um, and and really, you know, if you value your partners, you'll 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 run things by them. I worry sometimes about partnerships. Mm-hmm. Um, I've considered it for for Clear Camo, uh, bringing on somebody who's maybe more audiovisual or something else. When you were thinking about it, when you were looking at each other, and this sounds this sounds maybe a little weird that you're looking at each other like, wow. He's got qualities I like, but there's things I've been hurt before. I've been hurt before. You know, what were some of the things that you had to, what are some obstacles you had to overcome in your own head before you were ready to go to each other and say, Hey, I have this idea. I want you to help me with it. So I had the initial idea when I, when we graduated the program, um, I had the initial, I reached out to Josh because again, Josh and I were pretty close in the program before the program ended. It's a funny story. We were all kind of, you know, getting our ducks in a row, email contact list for everybody in the program because we were in the program for almost a year and a half or 18 months. I was like, hey, I have entrepreneurship goals. I'm sure other people in the program do. So within the WhatsApp, I was like, hey, I want to create an entrepreneurship group. We can exchange ideas back. Joe here sends me a reply back. Hey, I don't want to be a part of the group. I have zero desire to be an entrepreneur. However, if you do need a brand or marketing guy at any point, you can reach out to me, I'll help you out, and when you have enough money, you can pay me. I said, okay. So in my head, he wasn't in the equation, right? So when I talked to Josh, hey Josh, this is what I have, this is the idea. Josh was like, hey, we need to bring in Joe. Like he's a brand, I said, but Joe has like zero desire to be an entrepreneur. He's like, yeah, but it's a brand and market, let's reach out to him. So then I was like, all right, fine, let's, let's give him a call. Gave him a call, we were at Joe, we're like, yes, man, this is what we wanna do, and Joe starts shitting on the idea off the bat, right? He's like, he's like, oh, uh, a, a one product is not a brand. One product is not a company. And then and back and forth. And then literally like in a week, maybe about a week or a couple of days, he went from being 100%, 100% cold to like, hey, let's run with this. And then he just started running with it and started buying like the domain names. And I was like, how the hell did this happen so fast? Right? So it was, it was now it's, it's so funny how that happened. So, but um, once did you we, fall in love, that's what it sounds like. It sounds it like did, a bit, yeah. little bit like you fell in love. Fell well, in love. you know, I, I did I did tell him that it was a stupid idea, and yeah. that selling a <laughs> selling a single lapel pin is, is a is a terrible idea for a company, um, and that um, yeah I, I didn't get it. But I think the more I wrap my head around it and the messaging behind it, um, you know, this yes we sell a lapel pin, but it's it's never been about a pin. Not only a pin. It's, it's about stuff, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's never been about the pin though. It's yeah. been about the story behind it and starting those meaningful conversations and really putting a mission behind what we do as a company and the message that we bring to people um, that buy our products or give our products as gifts. Um, and so once I wrap my head around that idea, um, you know. Again, going back to the military service, you know, you say it, it's easy to wake up and, and feel a sense of purpose and mission when your charter is the defense of the nation. You know, you're, you're in the army for a reason. You're there because you, you love your country. You love serving with the brothers and sisters alongside you. And it's pr- pretty easy to like, you know, you don't search for a sense of purpose in the morning when you wake up. You're like, all right, got, got it. Um, once you take off that uniform and you're in a civilian career, um, you know, can you get as excited and as motivated around that as you did with your military service? And while I take pride in my, my day-to-day job, um, it, it doesn't hit me the same way that helping my fellow veterans share the story of their military service does. And, and what we do at Assault Forward and the products we develop and the way we go to market and sharing that our message as a company and the message that our products bring to our customers, um, that really is, is very exciting and, and interesting to me. And so um, 
you know, as we've grown now over the past year, it's, it's been interesting to see how many people buy our products for themselves, how many people say, you know what, that's a really awesome gift. I want to buy those for my dad, my brother, my, my best friend, my groomsmen at my wedding are going to get these as gifts. You know, those like all the things that that's done, my promotion, my retirement ceremony, we've had people buy for that. And then companies, you know, corporate bulk orders that have come to us and said, you know what, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I want to buy a hundred pins or, you know, and I want to give them out to either my employees that are veterans or I want to give them to my customers that are veterans to show a, a token of appreciation for their service. So like when people start connecting with your message, um, that's really exciting to me. So I did I did do a 180 and say, you know what, I don't think this is a good idea to say, you know what, I think I think this could really be something and this could really have a meaningful connection with people. And if this promotes pride of service, you know, um, you know, it's no secret, I think, that the good news is that the message is getting out that, you know, up to 22 veterans a day are committing suicide. Yeah. And you're seeing front page stories of, you know, retired colonel commits suicide in the VA. And, you know, I mean, these things, these things, these headlines hit you and they punch you right in the chest. Um, and you go, there's something, you know, and I'm not saying that these people lacked pride of their service. But if if we were able to start a conversation and they were able to talk positively about their service and internalize their service yes we all have our demons we all we all have our challenges and our struggles um you know as i mentioned earlier i brought home the 128 soldiers that were under my command for a year of combat in iraq i don't have all 128 soldiers walking the streets today because some of those soldiers have lost their battles with the demons of alcohol addiction ptsd um, and things like that and that that hurts me and I, I wonder if we had gotten our message out there sooner could we have helped those veterans connect with their communities around them find the support network they needed and talk about their service in a, in a way that makes them feel good about it um, and if they need help absolutely get it you know whether it's therapy medication you know community or whatever it can to help them but that's you know there's an opportunity here to to be so much more than just an e-commerce retail company. So I will, I will say this. So I always say the best job I ever had was when I was a platoon leader, battery XO, acting battery commander when I was deployed. Like nothing will ever match that. Like I remember the, my first year, first year and a half in active duty. It's like I can't believe I'm being paid to do this. Like this is such a cool job. I was I was like and you know and so I said nothing will ever match that. Being a veteran entrepreneur having a business working with our fellow veterans it's a pretty close second i would say just from a purpose standpoint like joe mentioned you know talking with vets being a part of the veteran ecosphere right bunker labs capital post a meeting you know i met with uh the black rifle coffee founder in chicago um i forgot his name again right now but evan. yeah evan you know, evan hafer yeah so just being in that ecosphere is so, so cool being around a fellow veteran so um again it's nothing will match the time on active duty but it's this, this, this is pretty fun and um pretty meaningful to us so you guys just recently hit a home run mm -hmm. and i saw some of these posts all over linkedin and facebook tell me about this home run that you guys just hit yeah so we were fortunate enough to participate in a uh pitch competition here in Washington, D.C. It was sponsored by Lyft, the uh, rideshare mm -hmm. organization. And they had done a survey that said uh, about 20% of their drivers are actually entrepreneurs that are driving to fund their other business goals. Um, and I happen to be one of them. Um, Starting back in April, um, I signed up to drive for Lyft. Um, I've given about 500 rides, just a little bit on the nights and weekends here and there around my other full-time job and this side job and the family obligations and things like that. But um, it was a good way to generate a little extra income and put some of that money towards Assault Forward as we were a young startup and uh, needed some, you know, our we're, we've bootstrapped this entire thing. Um, so putting our personal funds towards the marketing, towards the purchase of products and things like that and getting the website up and running. So um, had the opportunity to, uh, they, they reached out to drivers and said, hey, submit like a one minute video or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they got a couple hundred applications. They, 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 they narrowed it down to I think eight finalists eight. Mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough to be one of those eight finalists they put us through a um, startup boot camp uh, here in Washington DC in a partnership with an organization called seed spot which helps entrepreneurs in the DC community and did that um, did a lot of rehearsals um, practiced real hard and then um, they had a fantastic event um, at the um, blind wino in uh, in DC in uh, Southwest and uh, 
had the pitch competition. Um, my partners, Josh and Shaw, were able to set up a, a little shop in the entrepreneur marketplace. Yeah. Um, so we had our products on display downstairs, and then upstairs in the uh, the theater, we uh, had the pitch competition, and uh, our message resonated with the judges. They understood that we were filling that um, that loss of identity that veterans face um, through our products. They also really, I think, resonated with our our traction to date. That we, you know, we're almost ten thousand followers on social media. Our sales to date, you know, we have some meaningful sales numbers to date um, and things like that. So they really they resonated with us, and they thought that um, their in their comments that by winning the competition, that this this money that we won would be. Uh, an immediate impact for us. Um, we said, you know, what do we want to do with this money? I said, look, we win when we meet our fellow veterans, whether that's in person, face-to-face at events, or online um, through social media. And so we're going to definitely use that money to attend in-person events, um, either as a exhibitor at military conferences and conventions, um, through our pop-up shops. Um, we had the opportunity to exhibit at Fort Meade um, at the exchange on post. We were one of the vendors out in the front area that you see when you walk into the exchange on your base. Um, and so that was a great opportunity for that a portion of our sales from that weekend went to support MWR on post. So we're like, hey, this is cool. Great opportunity for us to give back, meet some new customers, generate some sales, like win, win, win. Um, and then also online there through social media and advertising, you know, can we connect with more veterans online? So a uh, tremendous opportunity. Um, very grateful to Lyft and the, uh, the DC entrepreneurial community for supporting us. And uh, it was a great, uh, great win for us. So yeah, yeah very proud Yeah, it of goes back to having three co-founders, right? Joe was on the stage. We kind of let him, you know, he had some nerves going up there. We were like, hey, you focus on that. We'll man the pop-up shop, making sales happen, doing things. So it was kind of divide and conquer, and that happens. And I think he mentioned, like, a couple of the other people who pitched, like, they were, you know, solo, mostly solo entrepreneurs, right? And they're like, hey, it's kind of cool you guys have multiple people, like, attacking this, right? And I think, for, you know, force and numbers, it just, it just works. And it worked out for us. And we're blessed and you know, lucky. You know, we get the first prize was fifteen thousand dollars. Up to that point, we we're bootstrapping. You know, with our own pocket. Like, hey, we can, we can, we can buy some stuff. You know, and take it to the next level. And we've been doing great. But this is nice cash infusion, and um, so it's been awesome. You know? So what's next? What is next for Salt Forward? So I think the key for our continued success and growth is expanding our product line. Uh, we definitely need more products and a more diverse set of products. Um, right now, if you're not a suit and tie or, or at least sport jacket wearing type, um, you know, you might visit our website because you're interested, but not, not find something that really resonates with you. Um, so as we move into other products, you know, hopefully we'll have something for you. Um, as we talked about that pitch competition, you know, um, female veterans are the fastest growing segment of the veteran population. And uh, we've heard from them. They've come to our website or messaged us on social media and said, hey, I like what you're doing, but I don't wear a tie bar. You know, I don't have cufflinks. What do you got for me? And so we definitely, um, we've heard their message and say, you know, we want to do like a, the reverse American flag, but turn it into like a charm for a Pandora style bracelet or for other, other fashion accessories that, that our female veteran uh, colleagues can wear. Um, so that'll definitely be expanding that product line to hit more customers and find something for everybody, um, you know, is important to us. And then, and then definitely, um, you know, basically we're a year old. Um, we've got, you know, got the website up and running, got the social media up and running, got the basic portfolio, but still brand awareness is critical to our, our growth and success. Uh, not too many people, I won't say nobody knows who we are anymore, Mm -hmm. but not too many people know who we are. So the opportunities for us to grow and spread our message is really critical because I think when people hear it, they like what we're doing. Hey, made in America, veteran owned, you know, American flag, it's subtle, it's professional, it's classy. You know, it's an attractive price point. You guys are selling it for a reasonable cost. Cool. I'm, I'm on. You know, let me place an order. So the more opportunities we have to connect with other veterans and, and their and their supporters, because like I said, probably about a third of our customers are gift givers. You know, they're buying it saying, you know, hey, a pair of cufflinks and a tie, bro, that's a nice gift, you know, or a lapel pin or, you know, I want to give these away to people I know that are veterans. Um, but what Joe mentioned, like expanding the product line is crucial. But then also for like we're, we're only a year old. When you mm-hmm. listen to these other podcast of successful entrepreneurs everyone hears about the overnight success <laughs> they don't hear about the years that they put in like oh every overnight uh, success takes years exactly yeah. years. Yeah, so every single one. yeah so we're like hey you know this is a marathon it's not a sprint and i think a lot of what they call like entrepreneurs people who want to start a business like they're looking for the instant home run right and it's not how it is like in in when we started like the things that we had to do just to get launched it was insane i mean we went from when we 
pulled the trigger on. We, when we came up, like it was in October of last year, we said, all right, this is what we're going to do. So October from the idea inception to our first sale was like February, but there was a lot that happened before then, right? Website, bank account, tax ID, articles of organization, blah, you know, on and on and on. So again, it's a lot of work and we're like, all right, now we're launched. Now, how do we grow? How do we grow? So, um, you know, we're like, hey, we're looking at the long game, expanding our product line as we're going and it's it's fun. And, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're not impatient. We're like, hey, we, we know this takes time and yeah. it, it's been it's been so much fun so far. Well, I mean, this is one thing we love putting in the work. Yeah. I mean, it's exciting though. Like when we have to, all, like, all it's, that, it's not even work, right? No, it's, it's not like even fun. Work. It's, it's so fun. much fun yeah. for us like, but, yeah. but don't let any of the stuff that Shaw said scare anybody out there yeah. from starting their business yeah, because sure, yeah. you can Google you know, what do I need, how to get a business bank account, how to get, you know, yeah. articles of organization, how to get a tax ID. None of that it should be a barrier to you starting yeah. your business. Um, but, the, you know, the fun stuff is, you know, like, who, what are we going to use for our shipping solution? What are we going to, what's our product packaging going to look like? How are we going to, what's our messaging that we put in with the package? You know, what we, you know, we give away a free sticker with our orders, you know, like, you know, figuring out like, hey, you know, are people going to like this? And like, then we, you know, people send us pictures of their, the yeah. sticker on their laptop or they put it on stuff. We're like, cool, that's awesome. You know, like, thanks for the support. Um, or we get these sighting photos of uh, people in airports that send us pictures of, uh, hey, I saw a guy with your pin on his lapel. Yeah. Um, we're like, oh, that's awesome. We're, you know, uh, Buffalo, New York, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, cool, cool. You know, so it's exciting as the message gets out there and spread. It motivates you to do more. That's awesome. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for uh, allowing me this this time with you guys. Uh, I'm learning from you as you do what you're doing. Uh, ClearComo is we're a service based company, but we're learning from the way that you do your marketing, from these lessons of like, well, what happens when you have partners? What happens when you don't have partnerships? Uh, going out and doing these pitch contests and just hearing your encouraging message to to the entrepreneurs, from the entrepreneurs, people, even if you've been doing this, if your business is six years old, you're still learning from the guy who just started up. Um, if I wanna go and buy some badass Assault Forward pins, products, where do I go and where can I learn more about you? Yeah, you should definitely go to assaultforward.us. And we use the .us extension because, again, everything is made in America. Uh, and you can find us on across all social media channels at Assault FWD. So we use the abbreviation for forward. So Assault FWD um, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that. And then uh, for anybody listening to this podcast, uh, if you go to our website, when you go to checkout, there's a spot for coupon code. If you punch in AAR. For the uh, After Action Review podcast, just just AAR, nice and simple, uh, we'll dock 10% off your order. 10% off your purchase at Assault Forward, folks. Just use promo code AAR. Thank you so much for that. That means a lot. Thanks, Rod. Yeah. Thank you, Rod. All right, guys. Any part shots for anybody? Now, go back to what Joe said. Um, you know, if, if you want to do something, whether it's entrepreneurship or better in shape start brazilian jiu-jitsu just do it right don't think about it a lot of people get in their own headspace mentally mm -hmm. like there's no one stopping you from doing what you want to do right i mean there's no excuses just just go for it whatever you whatever you want to do in life or in business or whatever it is assault forward it's, it's not just our brand name it's a mindset yeah. so assault forward just like you did on the battlefield take it into yeah. take it into your life every day and assault forward jump up out of bed and be fired up ready to go yeah caffeine up if you have to, uh, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is to find your motivation, but go out there and get it, man. Nothing's stopping you. Love it. Folks, Assault Forward, go check them out. All the links will be in the show notes so you can click on them, takes you right to it. Use promo code AAR. You're going to get 10% off your purchase at Assault Forward. And you're welcome, everyone, you're welcome for not having to hear too much about jujitsu. I've got a purple belt four stripe purple belt yes. in jujitsu. Everybody knows how much I love jujitsu and we uh, we only mentioned it what? once yeah. and I'm talking about it here at the end. And if you're sticking around this long, well, good for you. Yeah. You probably should be doing some jujitsu. Definitely should be doing jujitsu. <laughs> Definitely yeah. do jujitsu. Yeah. Folks, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There is no finer sport. There's no fighter, finer way of living for every veteran out there than jujitsu. It gives you, right, gives you your uniform back, you can put your patches on your uniform, gives you some rank, and you get to start doing something physically and cha physically challenging, mentally challenging, and if you're one of those thousands of vets who, like myself, we got out, we put on a little extra weight because we didn't go running like we thought we would, that happens, folks, go do some Type, find your tribe. And I know that's so, so overused. Find your tribe. 
but you really do. Find your tribe, find a gym that works for you. Jiu-jitsu is great. It's that time of year, right? 100%, yeah, it's great. It's Christmas, yeah. depression is rampant. It is. Jiu-jitsu is such an amazing release. It's an amazing way of bringing your mind. How do you feel when you do jujitsu? So I'll tell you this, so not to add minutes, but for- Please add minutes. Both. So when I got out of the army, I had an adrenaline rush and I, I needed to get it out, right? So I talked about, I thought about volunteer fire department, Fairfax County, looked at the requirement. You let to spend 12 hour days one, once a week. I was like, man, that's, that's a big commitment. And, I, and it took you take about a year to get into the fire truck. I was like, like I just want to get in the fire truck and just fight fires, right? Like. He's like, no, it's a long process. Like, okay, that's not going to work. I looked at the guard and the reserve. My wife just had a baby. He was like, eh, I don't know about that. Always been into UFC, MMA, and was like, hey, let me just start jiu-jitsu. And kind of like what you said, like, there's a lot of veterans that do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And it, it kind of, you put the uniform back on. You have the rank. There's a the respect. There's the culture, the tradition of how it works, like the respect. And end of the end of a long day when you're tired. Even when I'm tired, like I go to the gym in the mornings, and I do it because I know I have to. Like just like entrepreneurship with this, like jujitsu is fun, but end of the day, there's nothing better than rolling, sparring, trying to choke your other partner out, trying to you know rip their arms off. Um, but it makes you feel good, and from a physical fitness standpoint, it, it doesn't even compare. Oh, okay. Nothing compares. Like and uh, so again, if you're a veteran out there, if you're not a veteran, train Brazilian jujitsu. It's 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 amazing. I've been trying to get these guys uh, uh, to get in. Uh, partner Josh did wrestle in high school. But I told him, hey, come on, you could probably take me down, but then you'll end up in a guillotine show. <laughs> um, but, uh, we um, love but, you wrestlers. Yeah, I love wrestlers. But uh, it's great. I mean, I, I'm a huge proponent. I've been training for seven years now. Like, I'll train for the rest of my life. 100%. 100%. All right, folks, that does it for the show. You've got Assault Forward. You got some jujitsu. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Holidays. Xmas. Whatever it is that you celebrate. Just celebrate it well. Be safe. Folks, it is that time of year. We've said it. I said it before. And, and the reason I'm saying this is because I've lost people around this time of year. Reach the fuck out. Reach out. If that means you email me at Rod Rodriguez at the AAR podcast and you say, hey, Rod, I'm in a bad spot. I'm in a bad place. I just need someone to talk to. I will call you back. I will call you. Reach out. This is not the time to do rash things. Enjoy what we have, even if it's so little. I've been there. I've been I've been in positions where I'm trying to keep the lights on. Uh, I remember a time in my life where my wife and I were filling up water cans in our house because you're going to shut the water off the next day. We've been there. We've done that. We survived. And here we are. Things will get better. If you're a veteran and you're considering something crazy, and I say crazy because it's fucking crazy, don't do it. Don't hurt yourself. Call somebody. Call some. Uh, call a loved one. Call us. Hell, go on Assault Forward and send them an email. I swear to God, one of these guys will respond. They'll shoot you an email back. They will respond. All right, we love you. Hugs and kisses. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you at the next episode.